Right, Ipswich has one of the best young goalkeepers in the country. They play with three centre-backs, former Trammy player John McGreal, the highly experienced Terry Mowbray and alongside him youngster Wayne Brown. The two wing-backs will be Dutchman Fabian Vilnius and the former Spurs man Jamie Clapham. In midfield there's Nicky Stockwell, the club's longest serving player. He plays alongside Matt Holland and former Southampton man Jim Magilton. James Scowcroft lines up in attack in a lively looking partnership with David Johnson, their highest scorer, with 13 goals this season. Southampton goalkeeper Paul Jones hasn't missed a game this season. Norwegian Joe Tessum is the new man on the right of the Saints' defence. The two centre-backs are Klaus Lundetvarm and Dean Richards, and a fairly new face in the left-back position, England under-21 international Wayne Bridge. Three in midfield for Saints, club captain Jason Dodd, Matthew Oakley and Trong Eagle Saltfed. And a positive-looking front three, Stuart Ripley, Mark Hughes and the Latvian international and leading goal scorer this season, Marian Pahars. Illness again. Majil Johnson. Excellent control. This is Clapham. Cloud wanting him to shoot early. It's gone out for Wayne Brown. And that wasn't the easiest catch for Dave Jones. Or Paul, I should say. Followed his manager, Dave Jones, of course, from Stockport County, where he had a lot of cup success in the League Cup competition. This is where Salatra have the problem, Alan. They've got no natural left-sided player here. Bridge is playing as a left back. They wanted to try and get forward, but he can't do so. The balance of the side at the moment is uh, not quite right. Now Pahas threatening. He's got to wait because there's no uh, support arriving. It is now. He might decide to do it on his own, and he did, and might have to make a good reaction save. Bridge. Now Richards. This is Klaus Lundigban. Tessa. Ripley. Did well there, uh, Ripley. Tessum did as well. And he earns a corner. Well, that was good attacking play from the two wide players for Southampton. Forced Scowcroft back into a position to defend. Forced him to give away a corner. Wendy Clem on the near post, Richards coming in behind him. Just before that, of course, Southampton's leading goalscorer, Marianne Pahars, had the first genuine chance of the game. This is excellent play, this. Just doesn't turn McGrill once, he turns him twice. Shot comes in, good save from right. Fortunately, he doesn't fall. The Southampton player. And still keep possession here. Clapper. One man too many for him. Ripley, three forward in the Southampton attack. Hughes making a characteristic run to the near post. Bahaz is in there as well. Hughes got the header in. What a great ball that was from Ripley. Mark Hughes is complaining he was pushed. If he wasn't pushed, well, perhaps he should have scored. Just holds his run, gets in front of McGrill. Well, it could have been a push, couldn't it? There's Vilnius. Johnson. A little bit over elaborate this time from David Johnson. Mark Hughes maybe had a case here. It's good play from Ripley. Gets on the outside of Brown, crosses a good ball. No, I don't think it was a push. Certainly Hughes does well. He gets in between the two big defenders for Ipswich, McGrill and Mowbray. He can't quite direct his header towards goal. This is Clapham. Richards across to clear. George Birdie's team led the table for some five weeks earlier in the season. They've won exactly half the 22 league games so far. And most people would certainly see them finishing uh, 
if not in one of the automatic positions, then in the usual playoff place from the end of the season. They're only one point behind Pernodi Bradford last season and failed to go up if Swiss despite a new club record of 86 points. first 20 minutes here and although it's uh, technically a decent game it hasn't really got that rousing cup tie atmosphere as yet Vilnis the ball Scowcroft just couldn't make contact that was a good ball in from Vilnis checks back onto his left foot I just wondered here if Matt Holland could have gone in he looks to go in then just delays it if he had got another three or four yards, he could have got in and run the back of Scowcroft, who misses it. You don't quite see it there. There you see him coming into the picture. Normally, at times, them, them run so well into the box. Ripley decides to take on Clapham. He proves that he's not just a good attacking or wing back, he can defend as well. Big success in his time here, Jamie Clapham. And he's got Ripley making the cross again. And Southampton have uh, come back into it after an uncertain start. And enjoying a fair bit of possession. Wayne Bridge, who's really a left midfield player, he's only had a handful of games in the left back position. Is Klaus Lundigvam. And now Dean Richards. Which gets another opportunity to get forward. Loose ball though by Richards. And the Jilton feeds it early. Johnson offside. for the last uh, league game against Coventry. Mark Hughes offside. And sizes up the options and then makes the error. Here's Ripley. Defender might be punished for that. Mark Hughes, well placed in the middle. Over his clearance, and Hughes is still in the box. Bridge. Clever play by Scowcroft. Now the Jilton. This is Stockwell. Johnson carries the attack onwards. Wasn't a bad ball. Richards clear and Stockwell shot. Well, that was much better for this switch. Starting to get the passing game together. Excellent move, this. Once again, comes down the right hand side. This is where all the threats coming from, but not this time from Wilners. Johnson puts it into the box. It's heading clear. Early shot from Stockwell. Doesn't cause a problem to Jones. 36 now, here's Tony Mowbray. From Middlesbrough. Glasgow Celtic, and he's been here four years as well as playing his first team coach. He thought he had uh, finished his playing at the end of last season when he was made coach, but uh, they've been forced to bring him back. He's leaking a few goals in the early part of the season. Mowbray's come back in. Done very well for them. Chance now for Johnson. Well, we've got to credit Paul Jones for. Making the angle so difficult. Well, Paul Jones gets lucky here because as this goes over Richard's head, he's caught in no man's land. And he's fortunate that Johnson doesn't put more on it. Now Holland. Scowcroft. Turned into trouble. 
Reels clearance, that was important. As Hughes was poised, and still is, as Bridge brings Southampton on the attack again here. adapting to a relatively new role. Well, for a young boy, there's a big demand on him, isn't it? But he's been asked to defend in a left-back position in the back four. He's also, asked been, also been asked to push forward to try and provide an attack and threat in the last third of the pitch at the other end. Vilness. <laughs> Johnson's header. How many times have we said the dangers come from this right-hand side? A driven ball from Wilness, Johnson on the end of it, but he's too far out to really cause any problems for Jones. Must be all of 16 yards out, gets his header on target, but it's got to be some header to score from that distance. Johnson's flip. This is Scowcroft. Good save. Well, I did say that Johnson's deceptively good in the air, and this is a terrific leap. Gets up above Lundig Barn into the path of Skullcraft, hits it early, and forces a great save from Jones. I think it's probably going just wide, but he has to make sure he does it well. Bray beaten to it by Richards. Oakley. That's a very good ball out. Wasteful one then by Marianne Paraz. Just prior to that, it was excellent play, wasn't it, from Ipswich? Front two linked up so well. Normally you'd expect Skrokov to be the one flicking it on for Johnson. This time it was the reverse. Both of them in harmony. Excellent play between the front two. And that's excellent play too from Johnson. Seems to have run off his problem. Produces a good cross, but only one player in the box. That's his attacking partner, Scowcroft. That's good news, Ripswich. Problem of his ankle. Seems to have gone away. Well, I don't know about running more freely, because he's still limping. But they're certainly going to get him through to half-time. And it'll be up to the physio and the doctor to check it over. Foul there by Clapham. Free kick to Southampton, who do have a pretty dismal away record in recent years. In fact, if you uh, go back some time, over the last 32 away games in various competitions, they've only managed four wins and just one for Dave Jones' team in their last nine outside the Dell. Mowbray beaten to it, what a terrific goal! And would you believe Dean Richards, the last man to score on opponent's ground for Southampton, is the next man to score as well. And that was a brilliant header. Well, it was, but uh, I don't know where the market was from Ipswich. Totally free header. Somebody puts his arms up there, he doesn't make a challenge. Brilliant header. Well, I think it's uh, McGrill, who's the guilty partner. Raises his arms, he knows he's at fault. But what a header. In fact, it's not McGrill, I do apologise, it's Mowbray. That ball's come a long, long way. All of 50, 60 yards. Here he is again. Now Scowcroft. Vilnius. McGreal. Wasn't a bad ball in. Richards heads it away. And Ripley prevents the corner. A good ball out as well, but the flick back healer by Pahars was uh, not what was wanted there. Well, it certainly wasn't. Scowcroft. Stockwell. And finally, the shot coming in from Jim Magill. Yes, it all came about because Pars had the opportunity to keep possession of the ball, flicked it away, and he gave the ball back to Ipswich, and they almost score. Good run here from Oakley. Jilton barring the way, and got round him, and won a corner. Good play there by Matt Oakley. Oh, see a 
Giants waiting for the delivery there and the ever aggressive and competitive Hughes in the middle of them. And again they've left Richards free. Got away with it this time, Ipswich, but it could and almost was a second goal. Well, that chance is possibly easier than one that he scored with. Once again, just where are the markers? There's nobody within three yards of him. Richards, yet again, a free header. He's got six goals. And over half his appearances for Ipswich have been as a substitute. Can he make the difference now? And straight into the action. And almost released. Oh, and the goalkeeper lost it there, and they've got away with it. Well, I'll tell you what, Nader has been on the field 10 seconds and he could have got the equaliser. What a chance that was. He could have believed his luck as Jones dropped the ball. Well, it slipped out of his hands, presented him with a great opportunity. And he's straight into it again. And indeed earns his team a free kick. Well, he is a strong, aggressive competitor and his aggression has already created two openings. Well, this is the unexpected chance, Jones drops it. He actually plays it against his teammate's foot, Axel Dell. That's why he didn't go in the back of the net. There's an echo in here somewhere. Holland. Magilton. McGreal pumps it forward. Focus header, Naylor almost onto it. Yet again, Richards to the rescue. He, re he read danger well there. A timely intervention with his left boot. Once again, excellent defending from the big man. And there he is winning it again. Holland picks up the second ball this time, though. Right. Over Naylor's head. And uh, Lundic fans had a steady old game as well. Clapham's cross is a good one! Oh. Well, how many times have we mentioned it, but ever since he set foot on the pitch tonight, he has caused Southampton problems. Well, he knows exactly where to go, doesn't he? It's no coincidence that he takes up great positions. It's just unfortunate that his finishing doesn't really match his positional play. Well, he's only been on the field for a few minutes, and uh, he's probably created more problems for Southampton's defence than any of his teammates in the receiving 80 on. Yeah, I'm sure George Burley in the last 20, 25 minutes would like to have paired him with uh, Scowcroft and Johnson. And Scowcroft could be in with a late chance. Here he goes down. Everyone in front of us stands up and shouts penalty. Mr Barber didn't even think about it, apparently. Southampton on the counter-attack threaten again. McGreal's interception. I can't believe how often Southampton was still giving this ball away. This could be the last chance for Ipswich. Jilton's there, Naylor was there inevitably. Comes out to Brown, his shot wasn't bad. Just giving the ball away so carelessly. This is the penalty claim. No, not for me. I think that's fair. Challenge there between Bridge and Scowcroft. The crowd, home crowd, as you can imagine, up in arms. They want a penalty. They know that the game's drifting away from them. Apple with the decision to make here. Richard Wright delivers it forward, maybe, and definitely for the last time. Voted for, but for me, there was only one man of the match, and that's irrespective of his goal because it was a towering defensive performance by Dean Richards. His goal has proved the one that takes Dave Jones' side through to meet Aston Villa in the fourth round, and deservedly so. They go through, and Ipswich go out. The final scoreline of Portman Road, Ipswich Town nil, Southampton one.